everyone, this is Mark Philip Studica, and today I'm going to be building a basic mobile robot from the Fisher Technic STEM Engineering Kit, which is this right here. And so let's go ahead and jump into that. So today what I'll be building is essentially this little mobile robot here, which you see at the top left of the instruction manual. Uh, this starts at page 24 in the instruction manual, and I'll pretty much be going to... Uh, page 31, no, sorry, page uh, 30. And so the final thing will end up looking something like this, what you see here on the left. So before I actually start, I want to talk about being mindful of clipping your Fisher Technic parts together. Uh, for instance, if I look on page 26, at the bottom left instruction, there's a little black box piece that snaps in here, but the gap on the end of it is going uh, vertically, that means straight up and down instead of horizontally, which would be left and right. And it's easy to overlook these details when you're working, especially if you're trying to go quickly. Um, but for instance, here's the black piece that they have in there. So in general, what the instructions want you to do is just snap this piece onto the back of one of these kinds of pieces or sorry, onto the side of one of these kinds of pieces. And you end up with something like this. Now, the difficulty can come in. You'll notice that my groove here on the back is going vertical, which is the way that the instructions want it. But it's very, very easy for somebody to overlook that detail and snap this piece in like this. And now the groove is horizontal, and this is going to cause you a lot of trouble when you proceed through the rest of the steps in the manual. So I like to make mention of that before you get started building a model because I've done it myself a few times where I'm not paying close enough attention and I don't put a block the right way and all of a sudden I'm deconstructing my whole model just to get one block, twist it, and uh, proceed again from there. So be very mindful of that. Just uh, very carefully look at all the illustrations and make sure all your grooves uh, on all your blocks that you're placing all match what the instructions show you because it is intentional the way that they orient the pieces and uh, it will cause you trouble if you don't follow those directions exactly. One other consideration I want to bring to your attention is that this kit does utilize wires which you see over here on my left side and this is used for wiring the robotics controller so that you can program it using the RoboPro software on your computer. There's these special wires that have these casings on the end of them, these blue casings. And when I first done this model, I snipped these wires to about right here. And that pretty much rendered my model useless because you need these cables to be long enough to reach from wherever they are on the model into the robotics controller, which is this right here. So it's generally best practice to not cut wires unless the manual specifically tells you to cut wires. And if you do have to cut wires, make sure you actually measure out the length that the manual is telling you to cut because if you just try and eyeball it, you're more than likely going to wind up with too much cable or too little. Oftentimes it's better to have more cable than not enough cable because if you don't have enough cable You're gonna have to get you're gonna have to replace those parts uh, for your kit So with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build the model I'm going to speed up the footage so you get an overview of what all I'm doing I'll slow it down for parts that are more difficult or require some more explanation and at the end of the video we should have this full model done and I will also demonstrate how it works with the RoboPro software and the program that you can create to actually make the robot move around. So let's jump into it.
So when it comes to wiring these cables, there's a couple steps you need to do. In the uh, diagrams here, we see that there's these casings on the end of the wires. I'm holding one of the red ones right here. It's kind of small. But you can see that there's a small flathead screw on this side of the, uh, of the casing. And what we need to do is actually take that screw out. And what will end up happening is we, for each of these cables, we will push the metallic wire into there and then seal it back by screwing the screw back on. And then that will allow the wire to conduct electricity through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this small flathead screwdriver I have. I'm going to go ahead and twist this out. And then what the instructions recommend you do is that you take the wire and basically bend it backwards and then insert it into the hole in the back side of the casing and then take the screw again so I just dropped it we take the screw and we put it back into the hole that it was originally in and then we start to screw that back on I want to make sure it's pretty tight. And now our wire is inside the casing and it's secure. I'm pulling on it, nothing, it's not coming out or anything. So I'm going to have to repeat that for the other two wires and then I'm also going to have to do it on the uh, other one of these. So in general, these are the instructions or sorry, this is the procedure that you'll end up using for all the different wires, including these ones that we'll end up using later.